Hey guys, Adam back here in the AeroWorks workshop and I'm going to warn you up front, this is a little bit of a longer video because it encompasses over three weeks worth of work on the right wing on the Super Duty. It covers fuel tank installation, fuel lines, some wiring, a fuel leak, and the completion of the right wing. So if any of that interests you, stay tuned and let's get started with the video. All right guys, back at the wing here, finish up this fuel tank and a couple updates here that I uh, didn't realize as I was planning this out, but we got it corrected now. So originally, um, I had planned on the vent line coming and making a turn into this space and then going down through here and we were gonna put some lightning hole brackets here and the hose would be suspended and run down here like this until I realized that how am I gonna get the vent line back here where it needs to enter the aircraft because I'm not entering into this space here like some other builders are doing. So the feed line, which has a factory cut hole there for the rubber hose, of course we have steel braided lines from aircraft specialty, um, but the fuel line comes back to the rear spar and enters the fuel tank right in that spot there and then makes a 90 degree turn or you know roughly Nice curve here. And then we'll enter the aircraft here at the end of the uh, wing trailing edge spar area here. So we really needed to do the same thing with the vent line. However, like I said, with the standard Super Duty fuel and vent line kit that they had, um, the plan was I was gonna come this direction and go this way like some other builders had done, but I am not entering the aircraft in this area here. Some other builders may and that's fine, but all mine was set up for the trailing edge. So that meant that I had to add an additional 31 inches to that vent line and bring it over one bay to the right because another issue was we did not want to put a hole in the rear spar back here. I talked to Roger, sent him a photo, and he said, that's fine, you can put a, a rear hole back here just like we do for wiring, but do it on the outside, meaning this direction, of the strut support. We don't wanna weaken this area right here. That would be not the greatest thing, especially since you have all this tension right there. So that meant we had to put the hole on this side, which meant the hose had to make a lot longer route around. So therefore we had Steve at Aircraft Specialty um, make us up some new vent lines. These are the new lines and they will now definitely make the route that we need to make. So we're gonna get on that. We're gonna get on putting the hole in here for exiting into the trailing edge skin and then that vent line along with this wingtip wiring will carry along down here pick up with the fuel line and enter the aircraft over here at the wing route um, that does bring up another question again running fuel lines and wiring together always an issue there's always going to be an area on the aircraft where something has to pass something um, for the most part, 90% of this wiring is following the vent line only. It's only until we get back down here in the, uh, the last, you know, 12 inches or so that we have some wiring in the same space, if you will, as this fuel line. But there's not really another place to do that. Um, you know, we could redirect the wiring up into the, the wing rib area like we were going to do with the vent line and run it down here. Um, but then eventually you got to figure out how to get it to where it needs to go on this end So you're just you're kind of just moving one to move another one somewhere else. So that's what we're doing guys uh, I also put a grommet in here for the fuel uh, Level transducer so this wire will come across come through here. We'll do the ground wire and then we'll have our uh, lead wire to go to our fuel gauges and of course you have to put your fittings in after the fact because you cannot drop the tank in with these fuel fittings on so just know that when you're fitting up your, your uh, tanks that you have to uh, kind of fit the tanks in there first. Make sure your holes all line up both there and over here because you have fittings on both sides that have to line up with holes. This hole you actually have to make it yourself. The other one is there from the factory. Now that we've got all the fuel lines and everything figured out, we'll go ahead and pull those off and pull the tank out. We'll make sure that bay is nice and clean. We'll make sure the tank is nice and clean. And then we'll put it in there one final time and then we'll start adding the fittings back on with the Loctite thread sealant as well as doing our grounding wiring and thing like, things like that. We'll get the fuel lines put on, vent lines put on. 
we will do a pressure test and this is a very very low pressure test As a matter of fact we're going to use the pressure of a balloon um and again that was a recommendation from steve at aircraft specialty we're basically going to seal off one line and then we'll put a balloon on the other line with some air in it and just that amount of uh, air pressure in there is enough to really give a good leak check um, we'll come back 24 hours later if the balloon's still filled up we know that we have a good tight seal so that's what we're working on once that's done skins are going on and this wing will be wrapped up so that's what we're working on we're going to get back to it well, yeah and since we're talking about aircraft specialty uh, not only do they make cool fuel and uh, brake lines they make cool wheel chocks too and uh, these are uh, laser cut out and then powder coated to match my aircraft so Another thing that uh, Aircraft Specialty makes, you can order those on their website. We'll put a link down below for the wheel chocks. All right, we've gone ahead and put the lock thread, excuse me, Loctite. We're using Loctite 567 on all of our sealed components. So as you can see, we've got that on there. Now it's just a matter of tightening this back into the tank. snug fit but it's the only place you're gonna be able to get to it at this point even this access hole which comes from the factory is not going to really give you any access unless you can put a socket on there I suppose All right, well, we got the uh, fittings put back in. Everything is sealed up. And we've got grommets where things need to go. So we've got a grommet here on the trailing edge. This is the factory hole. This hose here will actually route like this. And we've got room to play, depending on where our fitting is. And of course, the trailing edge comes off of here. Our vent line is secure. We're gonna make some standoffs in here to hold this properly so it'll be navigating uh, through the this uh, open rib area here like that and being held off of those angle uh, with some brackets again grommet on the back and then this fuel or excuse me vent line will attach back here and zip tie along again that rear spar until we get on the uh, rear skin here are a couple nice shots of how we secured the wiring with the Dell clamps as well as the fuel line in the second bay over from the fuel tank. Well, this is a time lapse of the first balloon test. You can see the balloon at the top of the screen as well as the tank slowly deflating. Uh, we'll go into this more in the next segment. Well, it became very evident that the balloon method was not going to work in my case. It wasn't going to make a good seal on the hose lines as well as uh, I figured out the hard way that the fuel cap was vented, wasn't thinking about that, so I had to seal off the vent fuel filler tube and all that good stuff. So I ended up going to the plumbing store and picking up some fittings so I could make a nice tight seal with both the vent and fuel lines, as well as an air valve to put a small amount of air in the tank for a pressure test. Well, another small problem here, the pressure gauge I have doesn't go down or regulate, or excuse me, register low enough on the PSI level, at least not with this air set up. So um, I did put a little bit of air in there um, and I can tell because the tank has it's uh, bowed up a little bit. It kind of ex expands and contracts as you as I've been putting air in it. So not very much air in there. Like I said, a couple pounds of air is all it is. But what I did is I just basically put a little bit of air in there, closed the valve off. We'll leave this uh, overnight and we'll come back and we'll release the air and if the air goes out and the tank returns back down to normal i'm going to assume that it held air for 24 hours so not hearing any hissing no leaks on the fittings uh so i'm pretty confident that all the fittings are good so we're going to go with that for now That's what an air leak in a weld looks like. 
So since this aluminum is so thin, we are not going to try and uh, re-weld that. We'll have to use some tank sealant and uh, basically seal that off a little bit. And that's why we're losing air. So I took a piece of regular Scotch-Brite and uh, scuffed up the surface of the tank. This will allow the tank sealant to adhere to the aluminum a little bit better than the smooth finish that it comes with. Uh, after this, I just basically wiped it down with some alcohol and uh, got it ready for the tank sealant. So went ahead and uh, scotch brighted all this, cleaned it up with alcohol, and then put masking tape on here. We're going to basically just reseal. There's a couple, at least one pinhole right here on the weld. This aluminum is really too thin to uh, add an object that's this thick compared to the, how thin it is next to it without really... It, you got to be a super good welder. I don't know. The guy up the street, he's okay, but, you know, he's not an aircraft guy. So, anyways, he got these bungs welded in. I pressure tested it. Had a little air bubble coming out right here at the very top of the uh, fuel transducer. So, we're not going to take it back and try and weld this. We're basically going to seal it with tank sealer. So, I'm going to seal, essentially seal off this weld right here. And we'll see how it goes. A little side note here, you'll notice that I'm using my best cake decorating skills because the tube that Aircraft Specialty sells, they don't actually list a caulking gun to go with it anywhere, and I didn't find that out until after the fact. Uh, there is a few that are made. For some reason, for these small tubes, they're very expensive, so uh, I had to use the thumb method during this application process. Well, it ain't pretty, but we've got nice even coverage around where that weld meets or joins the tank to the insert that we had to weld in for the fuel transducer. So we'll let that dry up. That was really the only place I had a little air bubble there. Should seal that off and then we can get back to closing up this wing. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a little something. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, and share the video. And we'll have more Super Duty building coming up soon. Thanks for watching, and thanks for uh, commenting down below. We'll see you on the next video.